John Steingart is the former frontman of the Christian band Hawk Nelson. Although he left Christianity relatively recently, he's still exploring things. One of his main hang-ups is that it seems for someone to really be persuaded by the evidence for Christianity, you have to get a grip on some heavy scholarship. I admit I also love his sense of humor displayed in his tweet. He writes, I guess right on my tombstone would have gone to heaven but didn't sufficiently understand base there. But does John have a valid point here? Shouldn't the truth of the gospel be more obvious? Are only philosophy and apologetics geeks rationally justified in their faith? I think John is expressing a common concern that people have about having an evidential faith. But this complaint, while seemingly sensible, misses the mark. Philosopher Lydia McGrew distinguishes between an explicit rational justification for Christian faith and an implicit or tacit justification. I think that almost every believer has at least an implicit, rational basis for believing that God exists. Paul says in Romans 1.20 that many of God's attributes have been clearly seen since the creation of the world and are understood by the things that are made so that they are without excuse. The Greek word translated without excuse literally means without apology. Also, the psalmist wrote that the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. But I don't think that the Bible authors were conceiving of people needing 120 plus hours of philosophy, astrophysics, or molecular biology to have a rational warrant for a belief in a creator. Rather, I think that anyone can recognize that things have been made for a purpose. For instance, here's hip-hop mogul Jay-Z and why he believes there's a God. I don't know how else to explain this sunset and how if I get a cut, you know, a scab forms and how my body is like this uh, computer that reacts to movement, how my eyebrows is uh, made to keep sweat from going in my eyes and how everything works so perfectly. No one can tell me that two planets crashed and these things happen. It's very hard for me to believe that. There's also Whitaker Chambers, who was a Communist Party member and a former Soviet spy, who later defected and became a journalist. In 1938, just before leaving the Communist Party, Chambers observed the shape of his daughter's ear while feeding her. Chambers observed that something this beautiful and unique implied design, which implies the existence of God. And even a biologist, as stridently atheistic as Francis Crick, said that biologists must constantly keep in mind that what they see was not designed, but rather evolved. And in the same way Richard Dawkins has said at the beginning of his book, The Blind Watchmaker, that biology is the study of complicated things that have the appearance of having been designed with a purpose. So when a street evangelist like Ray Comfort says that every building needs a builder, as someone who has studied philosophical arguments for God's existence, I definitely cringe a little bit. I know that Ray can't hold his own in a debate with an atheist like Matt Dillahunty. However, I think he is tacitly justified in his faith, even though he's sometimes really bad at articulating it. Interestingly enough, in a recent video with Catholic apologist Trent Horn, Steingard now says that he finds the existence of God to be quite plausible. It's Christianity that he has major hangups with. If I, if I'm able, it's difficult to do, but if I'm able to sort of like set my preconceived notions about theism because of Christianity aside, then just like the idea that there might be some version of God actually seems like fairly plausible to me. Mm -hmm. And here's where I could relate a little bit. When I was in my teens, I found out that my mother had cancer. Much of my hometown of St. Louis was engulfed in a massive flood. I saw hunger and disaster all over the world. And so I concluded that a good and loving God probably didn't exist. But after a few years, I began to think that the idea of God was plausible, even if I had never heard of the fine tuning argument, the argument from consciousness or the argument from contingency. I figured if God existed, he'd probably at least want to say hello and maybe teach us some things like how to live our lives or how to have eternal life. And so I looked at the Bible and the Quran because they all claim to be some kind of revelation from the creator. I'd never heard of things like undesigned coincidences or external historical confirmations. I had no clue who William Paley or even Lee Strobel or Josh McDowell was for that matter. But as I read through the Gospels, I was struck by the fact that they read his eyewitness reports, not as fictions and forgeries. As weird as I thought the miracle claims were, these stories didn't come across as cunningly devised fables. And in time, this made me at least more open to accepting the testimonies written in them. And when I later read a prophetic passage like Isaiah 53, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Seeing apparent fulfilled prophecy or verisimilitude in the accounts wasn't something that required a PhD in biblical studies to discover, but I definitely couldn't express what I had understood in an articulate, explicit way, even if I got the sense of the cumulative case. Now, when it came to sharing my faith with people with objections, 
It forced me to learn how to more deeply understand the evidence for Christianity in a way that I could articulate it. Being in a position where your faith isn't explicit is a pretty precarious place to be, especially in this present climate where wolves are seeking to devour the sheep. The inarticulate convert is at risk of falling prey to periods of doubts or worse, or they may be afraid to share their faith for fear of not being able to properly defend it, even if they do remain confident in its truth in ways that they can't fully explain. The kingdom of God needs well-trained ambassadors who can give a strong case for Christianity and be able to defend it against the toughest objections. The good news is, is that discovering the evidence for God or Christianity isn't actually that difficult, especially in this age of information. But this age of information can be a double-edged sword. Things have been needlessly complicated by substandard scholarship and poor criteria that insist that the common sense answer can't actually be the correct one. And I'm afraid often social media has amplified this problem. Because there's a ton of interest in this topic, tons of things have been said on these issues. There is no shortage of content out there that is heavy on rhetoric and light on substance. Therefore, a ton of time is spent answering really flawed arguments that should have never gained momentum to begin with. This is why I recommend believers learn how to steel man the evidence for Christianity first, which I talk about in this video. So I'll see you over there and thank you so much for watching.